So today um, I'm going to be making some cute projects with this stamp set and, um, and die set, with this bundle. It's called Pamper Pets and it's um, really cute and I've been having so much fun making projects. So I'm going to, um, let's do giveaways first from last week. Remember we had giveaways and then we'll t talk about the Pamper Pets some more. So this was last week's giveaway. Remember this was a um, little card kit with some different card stocks. And um, let's see, who's that? Hi, Kristen. Hi, Susan. Thanks for joining me. So, Susan, you're just in time. I was just to announce that you are the winner of last week's giveaway. So there's basically everything you need to make some nice cards. So there's some designer series paper. There's some different colored card stocks, some ribbon and some cute doilies. So, Susan, that is coming your way soon. So congratulations. And then this week's giveaway is, hi Jackie, hi Kristen, hi Susan. Um, this week's giveaway is these um, sequins and matching twine. Uh, these are great for shakers, shaker cards, or just for decorating cards with them. The twine matches, so that's really nice. So that will be this week's giveaway. And you can just um, comment or like my post um, and um, and share my post and you will go into the drawing for um, the giveaway and I always keep it open for a few days after so that people can catch it on the replay um, so that's that's the giveaway all right so back to pampered pets let me show you in the catalog the pampered pets suite because there is a whole suite and I'll be using most of that today so the, the, the suite is called playful pets and it consists of the stamps and the dies. And then there's some um, other things in the suite. There's some twine and some really cute little um, trinkets. But here's the pages in the catalog. Um, and such fun projects that they've done. Look at these cute little dog bones and treat bags. And, and I've done some cute stuff too. I'll show you in just a minute. But let me sh show you the, all the suite. So I so here are the stamps and the dies. I just had those out at the beginning. So there's there's two doggies and there's two kitties and then there's some sentiments. And the let's show you the dies. So this die cuts out that little dog. Um, this is the guy that's the little dog that's I think he's scratching. I'm not sure. And then this kitty. He looks like he's worried or scared. That die cuts out that one, and then this cuts out this one. And then also the dies cut out some things on the paper. And look at these cute little paws. Um, I'll show you how I use some of those on cards. So now um, sometimes people ask me about how I store my dies. So these, when you, when you purchase dies, these don't come on a magnet, but I put them on one because it makes storing them um, really easy. And I just buy magnet sheets and I just cut them down to whatever size I like that I need for the dies. And I label them with the name and the number of the dies. And then I always put in parentheses how many dies there are in the set. And that way, especially if I'm using them in my classes, I can always, I always know that the right number of dies have gone back um, onto the magnet again. So that's what, that's how I like to store them. And if you store them with the cut surface up, um, they stay on to the die sheet better because there's more surface area. If you flip them over, which people at all my workshops always put them back on the magnets like this and they don't stay on so well. They stay on much better if you put the cut side up. So that's dies. Um, some other things in the suite, um, this combo ribbon combo. I kind of like how they're doing the combos now um, because most of the ribbons come 10 yards to a pack and um, we don't always need 10 yards. 10 yards is a lot of ribbon, but when they do it this way, I think we still get 10 yards of this twine, but I think only five yards of the ribbon, which actually is often plenty. Um, so that's the ribbon combo. Um, this pretty, I love the colors, the black and the red. So that's those. And then, these cute little trinkets that are adorable. There's a little bone, show you, and a heart. If 
putting in my hand. So let's see if I can show you those, how cute they are. You can see my wrinkly palm, but I don't know if you can see those holding them up. So that's that. There's a the delay on Facebook, so yeah, a heart and a bone. And you get, let me see how many you get, 20, so you get 10 of each. So now let's look at the paper. The paper is just the best part. So you get 12 sheets of designer series paper. And of course, you know how Stampin' Up! always does them double-sided. So there's two sheets of doggies. So you get 12 by 12 paper. And look, look at this. So these are the big dogs. So I think that's a Great Dane, maybe. German Shepherd, that looks like a chow. And this one, I'm not sure what he is. Some kind of a, like a hound or a terrier or something. But so cute. And there's no labby dabby, no Labrador. I have a yellow lab, but there's no yellow lab. I'm sad, but that's okay. And then here's the little dogs or the littler dogs. This kind of reminds me of Lady and the Tramp. This little guy, he's like the little boy in Lady of the Tramp, don't you think? Um, so he's a, what is he, a schnauzer maybe? And then there's a, and there's a, a Dachshund, a wiener dog, and a little, that looks like a, um, oh, I can't think what, they're the dogs that you always see with the little bows in their heads, Yorkshire Terrier. And then this, a Pomeranian maybe? And this guy is a, is that a Pekingese? But anyway, cute, cute doggies. And then, oh, let's look on the back of these. So on the back of this one is the little paws and the hearts. And the back of this one is just stripes. I hate it when there's two really cute sides, you know, a paper has two really cute sides and you don't know which one to use and you don't want to use up one side and then not use the other. Here's the kitties. So there's two sheets of kitties too, all different. Cute cats. I don't have any cats. I, I do love cats. I don't have any at the moment. We had two cats. One this colour and one this colour, a grey one and a uh, ginger one. And they both lived till they were 17, but we don't have any cats at the moment, just a dog. And then on the back of this one is little fishies and hearts. Um, so cute, another little tabby. So, and on the back of this one is, I think this is supposed to be cat, cat fur, do you think? It's cute, huh? And then there's another couple of sheets. Here's the um, kitty, kitty food. So a little fish, little bowls with fish on it and feathers, toys, kitty toys. And on the back of this one is words. You probably can't see them, but um, they say, poor jump, love, meow, purr, snooze, yawn, poor jump. So cute kitty words. And then here's the other, the dog one. So um, dog bowls and bones and paws and collars. And this one has words on the back. Uh, woof, dig, chase, scratch, wag, play, love, bark. So really cute paper. All right, so here's some of the projects I made. I had so much fun. So the first cards I made, I actually made, um, copied cards that were in the catalog. You know, there's so many great cards. I'm sorry about that shadow, but um, I hope it's not too annoying. And I apologize because I listened back to last week's, you know, I've got this new setup in my, um, where I'm actually in a bedroom with a closed door. And I know my sister mentioned that my voice kind of got loud and quiet a little bit. And what happened, it was getting loud when I stood up because um, when I stood up to stamp because my, my face was closer to the phone. So I've moved the camera this time. So hopefully my um, voice won't, you know, get louder and quieter. Um, I'm just still learning this, this kind of adjusting things to this new setup. Hi, Chris, it's my sister, just joined. So anyway, back to the cards. So this these were the first two that I made um, and they're actually in the catalog. And I like how they did, this is kind of the more simple version. I stamped and colored in the dog and the cat um, with the um, with stamping blends and stamped the heart along there and some designer series paper. This one is the same kind of design, but it's stepped up. So it has those little paw the paw dies. These little ones, 
um, I did a border along the top and the bottom and then I um, embossed this I don't know if you can see but it's got that brick I, I think it's called brick and mortar the embossing folder and um, die cut too so what I didn't show you is that you can actually die cut let me bring back the paper just a second let me show you this so on this dog paper I love how Stamping Up does this this die will actually cut out this little guy right here and then on the kitty paper Kitties, I know right one. Where are your kitties? Here, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty. Well, it's not that one, it's the other one. It's this one. This die cuts out this little kitty, the little kind of kitty that looks like he's frightened or seen a ghost or something. So, um, so that's um, really nice that Stampin' Up does that, that you can actually use the dies on the paper. All right, so I was showing you my projects. So that was that one. And then I made these ones that would be um, pet sympathy cards. And I made one for cats and one for dogs. Always in your heart, so sorry for your loss. And what I did is I just cut out hearts from the paper with the heart punch. You may remember that I did a Facebook Live with a spinning heart for Valentine's Day. And I used the same punches this and then you have to punch two hearts upside down um, so that the images stay the right way um, and I just cut them in half um, so that's those two and then I made this cute little card that was also in the catalog and um, this one made me laugh because um, my my dog Tally my lab she had um, a tumour on her ear that she had to have removed a few months ago and she had to wear the cone of shame. I don't know if you can see but there's a vellum, a little vellum cone on there. So she had to wear the cone of shame for um, mm, probably a couple of weeks actually, poor thing, until she got her stitches out. So that kind of reminded me of that. I'll have to post a picture of Tally, this card and Tally, I didn't put this one on my Facebook page yet but I'll have to post a picture. Um, of Tally in her Conan of Shame and then this little one too. So you could send that to someone with a pet that's had surgery. Then I had some fun doing some doggy treat things. I didn't have kitty treats, so I couldn't make kitty treat packages, but I made this. And this was super easy to make. I took um, Stampin' Up! sells these cute bags. And let me open it and show you how it's made. So I just this bow so what I did was I just took a long strip of paper so I measured the bag the bag was just a just a fraction less than three inches so I just cut a strip of paper that was a little less than three inches by I think about ten and you want to make sure if it's a directional paper that you've got in the bottom part here you've got it facing the right way and I just folded um, about two inches and then about two inches along the bottom too to, for the bottom part and then um, then you just fold over the top and I put this ribbon on um, under this tag so it would stay and then you can just tie it up again isn't that cute so you could do that with cat treats too for sure or any other kind of human treats too using a different stamp set so um, that was quick and easy to make see bows are always a bit of a challenge to there we go and then I added that little cute doggy bill. So that's that. And then the last thing I made that was really cute too is another little treat box. And this is what we call a belly band. This just slides off. In theory, see, there we go. And now these are, Stamping Up just started selling these. These are mini paper pumpkin boxes. So those of you who know about paper pumpkin or subscribe, your kit comes in a box like this every month, but it's bigger. So they've made these mini ones and they're waxed inside. So, well, I don't know about wax, but they've got, a, um, they're food safe anyway. They've got a finish inside that's food safe. So look here in this one, we've got little doggy treats. And then I don't know if you can see on the lid, but it says Yumalicious. 
and then I lined the lid. So this could be for somebody that got a new pet, maybe. Um, you could do it with cat food too. I I could put another one in here, but I ran out of um, um, tally treats that weren't broken. I had to find bones that weren't broken. So I wrapped the bones in the little words. It's a bit over the top, but it was fun to do. So that, and then that this just slides back on like that. And again, I decorated with a little, some ribbon and a little bone on the little dog bowl. So anyway, you can tell I've had way too much fun. So the card we're gonna make today is this one. Um, this is called, I think it's it's a fun fold and I think it's called a center step up card or something. So it just, um, it folds flat, it'll sit up. I don't know how to show you this so that you can see, but anyway, it will sit up, um, but it'll also fold flat to go in an envelope and it's still um, the same size as, size as a traditional card size. And um, I did some stuff on the back too. So it says, love you most. And then I put on the back, nobody gets me like you do. I think that's a bit crooked, but never mind. And then the cute little guy who's um, sitting or scratching or I'm not sure what he's doing, some butterflies. So we're gonna make this today, but we're gonna make um, the kitty version. So let's get started. So I'm gonna, sh well, let's see, we're starting out with a piece of smoky slate and it's half a piece of, it's half of an eight and a half by 11 piece. So it's um, five and a half this way and eight and a half this way. And we're not gonna fold it in half like a normal card base. I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer. And I kind of made, I made a template for you. I don't know if you can see the pencil lines okay on this. I'm gonna wait till I see. But um, I made a template so you can see where to cut and where to score. It doesn't show up very well. I should have done it with pen. But I will post this on my Facebook page um, afterwards so you can see the dimensions and where to score and where to cut because it's a little bit tricky. It's not too bad. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my, my smoky slate and I'm going to line it up at the one inch mark. I might need to stand up to do this. So hopefully my voice won't get too loud or quiet. So I'm going to line it up with the one inch mark. And then I'm going to take my cutting blade. So there's two blades on here. The dark one is the cutting and the light one is the scoring. And I'm going to just cut down to this one inch mark. And you can see right here on the guide. So I'm going to, with my left hand, just cut down right to the one inch mark like that. Oh, no, I did that wrong. Okay. Fortunately, I have another piece of paper. Okay, forget that part. What I'm going to do is I'm going <laughs> to line it up at the one inch mark. I cut myself a second one or I saved the, you know, the second half thinking just in case I miss up. All right. So start over. What we're going to do is we're going to line up the cutting guide at the one inch mark and we're going to cut down to five and a quarter. OK, just like that. Then I'm gonna move this over. See, there's a one inch mark either side um, of the where it cuts. So I'm gonna move this over to this one inch mark now. This is the, the trickiest part actually doing the cutting. And then I'm going to again, move my cutting blade down to the one inch mark. And then I'm gonna cut down to five and a quarter. Okay, now that's all the cutting we're gonna do. So we're gonna move Mr. Cutter out the way and bring in Mr. Scorer. And then I'm gonna turn um, anti-clockwise or counterclockwise, as you say, I say anti-clockwise. And again, we'll line it up at the one inch mark. And this time I'm gonna score on the outsides of the cutting. Where the cut so I'm gonna score just down to one inch. Like that, I can do it a couple of times. And then I'm gonna come down to the, um, where the cutting line is and score to the edge like this. Then I'm gonna move over to two inches and I'm gonna do exactly the same. So I'm gonna score, I'll take it up to the top, down to the cutting line and back. 
start of the cutting line come back and then let's see let me see my template here and then down to the bottom to the five and a quarter where the cutting where my cut ends so that'll be at the five and a quarter mark and we'll score in and then again into where the cutting line all right now i've got to do one more scoring line across the middle so i'm going to move it back to the four and a quarter mark over here and i'm going to this time score between the cut lines so just like that all right and that's it so it's really not that hard once you know how let's put my trimmer away all right so then all we need to do um, is fold so i'm going to fold first on that center line and on this one and then let's see make sure i'm doing this right so that this is going to be the front so we want to fold like this so we're going to basically do if so this is a mountain and this is a valley let's hold it this way this is a mountain fold this is a valley fold so we're going to go mountain valley mountain and then this one gets mountain fold so there's our card base okay that's what it looks like from the side all right so that's the hard part done everything else is easy from now on so let me bring in all my little pieces i got everything pre-cut and i got post-it notes so that you can see the dimensions all right so first of all i've got my matte layers and this is cut from flirty flamingo and so let me bring in those pieces so we've got the pieces that are going to go here and here and this piece along the bottom and this square right here let's go that way now you'll notice i've got a big oval cut out from the middle there and that's for this little sentiment on the front and this nobody's going to see this it's going to be hidden behind the white piece so you can conserve a little bit of cardstock so these are the dimensions for these pieces this square or almost a square is three and three eighths by three eighths then we've got um, this piece seven eighths of an inch by five and three eighths and then these two little pieces seven eighths of an inch by three and an eighth i'm sorry you guys um Christine and Jackie, if you're working in centimeters, you'll have to get your old one inch ruler out. Um, all right, so let's put this piece to a side for a minute. So let's stick, um, layer these together. So these three pieces are gonna line up on these and these three pieces are a little bit smaller. So this piece is three quarters of an inch by five and a quarter. And then these two pieces are three quarters of an inch by three. We need two of them. So let's stick those together and we'll put those onto the card. So I know that adhesive. All right, make sure when you're cutting these, um, these pieces need to go up and down and then this piece needs to go from side to side, the design. So make sure you um, get your pieces cut the right, with the white way, the right way round. Let's see, I'm gonna get my other, other tape. adhesive right here all right so let's see stick this one on in the center and then we'll do these two I'm getting used to this adhesive now I'm finding you do a really gentle touch and then if you do a little Kind of a like a little check mark at the end it works really well so i'm learning and stick these two on oops that one's too short what did i do well it's gonna have to do for right now i don't know what i did maybe i made this piece too long let's see oh yeah i made that piece too long so i'll just See, I didn't do that in the center very well. So I can take it off and do it again. 
<laughs> Still getting all adhesive on. What I'll do is I'll put this on and then I'll trim it down, the pink piece down. I'll still cut it all Yeah, there we go. And I'll do the same with this piece. Right. Right, and then I'll just take my scissors and snip this little end piece off. Hopefully now it'll be the right length, we'll see. Now we'll stick these onto here. Yes. On the bottom, make sure you've got your hearts or your fishes or whatever up the right way, not upside down. That would be bad. Hopefully I cut this one right, yes. And then hopefully now these will fit on correctly, yes. So make sure you stick these ones on the right way too, not upside down. Some adhesive. So I need this way. I'll just stick these in here. And this one needs to go this way. I couldn't decide whether to use this paper or the little sayings, the meow and that, but I decided to go with this. All right, so that's gonna be like that. That's cute. And now we're going to put our white piece that hopefully is the right size onto here. Yes. Actually, let's do some stamping um, and that first. Let's see. Let's figure out what kitties are going to go on here. So I've got one somewhere. Maybe not. I die cut one, but I don't know what I've done with it. I might have to I cut another. Let's see here. Kitty kitty, where are you? Here, kitty kitty. Here, kitty kitty. Uh oh, where'd you go? Alright, so I don't have my big shot in here, so I'm gonna do a really quick fussy cut of this one. I'm gonna cut this one out right here. And then I'm going to pick, the nice thing is if you don't have the dies, they're actually pretty quick to cut out, not too complicated. And these snips, these Stampin' Up snips are really, um, really great scissors for fussy cutting. So I'm leaving a little border like the dies do also. So I had this all die cut up ahead of time and I don't know what I've done with them. He's gone off. He's a shy kitty. He's gone off and into hiding somewhere. He didn't want to. He's camera shy. That's what he is. He didn't want to be on camera. <laughs> so anyway, that's okay. We'll just cut another one. So this is this is like my kitty that I used to have, Amber. I had a ginger cat kitty called Amber. It's really cute. All right, and then we need one more. Let's see. I want one that's facing the other direction, facing towards him. I don't know any of those. Let's see if there's one on here. This one's cute, isn't it? Let's cut him out, or her out. Um, I'll just do a quick... I'll cut out this one. Too. So sorry about this. I, I'm not very organized. I, I guess say I had, well, I, I had the other one die cut. I, I still would have needed to cut one, but you would have only had to watch me cut one out instead of two. So sorry about this. But anyway, never mind. And when you do this, you can take a little bit of care. But 
I'm not going too bad here. I want his ears. I don't want to cut off any ears or whiskers. So um, I'm glad I'm set up in here today because my son's here working from here today with his dog. Also, so I've got two dogs here and Odie, his dog, tends to bark at the slightest noise outside. So it would have been a bit of a disaster probably if I had been trying to do my Facebook Live to go around his, um, you know, where I, where I used to do it. Um, who knows what would have happened um, if someone came to the door or even just walked by. See if I can do a better job around his whiskers because they kind of look a little funky. So um, I'm glad I have this set up. Um, like I said, just kind of tweaking it a little bit. This time I'm using a bigger table. All right, so those guys are cute. All right, so next, I'm sorry if I went off camera there when I was talking. So then what I did, I wanted the kiddies not to be just kind of hanging out in midair. So I just um, did a little bit of um, gray smoky slate blends and I just kind of made like a little, I'm not doing this very well, but this is just kind of like ground for them to sit on. It doesn't show very much, but just so that no. And then we'll put them like this. And then we'll do some hearts. So I'm going to stick them on before I put the hearts on. Put some dimensionals here. Um, oops. That way I know where to stamp the hearts. There's one. Two. Put this, let's see, this little guy like this, this little guy like this. I'm just gonna stamp a little heart between them. My heart stamp. Just right there. It's cute. I'll color him. Color him in in my my blends. Just real quick. Hmm. And we'll stick him on here. Come on. See, let's make sure we get him this the right way around and see so no one's going to see that oval that I've cut out. And then we'll stick this under here. What I do find with this adhesive is that if you're not on a flat surface, it doesn't like it. We'll stick this on here. Now what you can do, well, I have seen some people doing cards like this and they've actually cut this out in one piece so you don't get this little strip along here. But you do use more paper that way because you have to use a big piece and then just cut out sections. So I thought it would be easier to do it like this um, today. All right, so let's see. We've just got to put, oh, you know what? I forgot to put my ribbon round. I'm always doing that, aren't I? Let's see if I can. It's like, I don't know. I seem to always forget that part. We can, we can do it. I'm going to do red ribbon this time. A bit hopeless. Just slide. 
slide it under. Oh goodness. Come on, get under there. There we go. I can, I can do this. Have I cut it long enough? It's just going to be a knot. It's not going to be a bow this time. Or, actually, or I can add a bow maybe. I'm just not doing a very good job of this. Bow, tying bows on camera is hard. Oh goodness. Try this again. I have my one end is too short. Oh dear. Okay, one more time. Third time's a charm. There we go. Yay! Oh goodness, well, I didn't do a very good job there, but anyway, we'll do the greeting and then I'll figure that out, the sentiment. All right, so here's these two pieces and these are cut out from the layering ovals. Let me show you these. These are the ovals and these are great because there's, there's as you can see, many different sizes and you just pick which um, size you need, and then you go up one for the scalloped layer. So that's what I use for those. And then I'm gonna stamp this, um, this stamp, um, Love You Most. And this is actually from a host um, set. So this is in the new catalog, but you can only get this if you um, have $150 in orders or more and then um, it's like a reduced price but I liked the sentiments I love the font and the little flourishes so I think I'm gonna get a use a lot of use out of this set so let's stamp this and into here I cut out extras of these two in case I mess up I haven't put the backing on this stamp yet so let's see if we can do this Oh yeah, there we go. I always kind of surprise myself when it comes out right. <laughs> so I'll stick this under here. And it's not quite centered. A couple of dimensionals. Can I put those right here? Let's see where I'm going to line it up. All right, so I need to be careful I don't put a dimensional up here. I just need them kind of this side. So I'll just do a couple. I can cover up where I pulled up the. <laughs> That's hard to put the ribbon back on. Goodness. Right, so let's put this little guy right here. Like that. It's cute. All right, let's see what I can do here. I think what I'll do is I will trim this off really short and then I'll tie another little bow. It's much easier to tie when you don't have it actually on the card bring this back in and then I'll show you how I attach the little charm so what I do is I do the bunny ears method which is easy with ribbon like that and this last words right you can just adjust it get it to whatever size you want it's a bit weird don't like that do it one more time. Okay, that's better. All right. Snip. Snip. 
then I'm going to attach that with a glue dot like that. Okay, so the easiest way is just to put your bow right onto the glue dot. And then we're just going to put it on there like that. You can still see the knot underneath a little bit. Because what I did with the other card is I didn't do the bow. I wrapped the twine around the card and taped it on the back. And then I tied a little bow and stuck it over the top. Um, which is easiest. You can get it nice and tight then. Um, so I didn't do a very good job with this one. But um, that's how I would do it normally. I'm going to trim this a little bit shorter and then I'm going to show you how I attach the, the little charm. Let's see, where did I put the little charms? Yeah. Let's do... Let's get a heart. What I did was I actually put a glue dot into the back of the heart. And then we kind of just poke it in there so it looks like you've tied it to the bow, but it's actually easier to I'll just stick him underneath like that. So it's not perfect. My ribbon's kind of <laughs> twisted. But I think it's still really cute. What do you think? All right, so for the back, um, let's see, it's already 12.42. So I don't think I'm gonna do the back now because I've kept you long enough. But um, let's move some of this stuff out. Well, t I'll tell you how I did the back. Um, I just took a piece of um, white cardstock um, that was, five and a quarter by four. And then kind of like on you, on the trimmer, I just cut an inch, um, an inch square out. Um, and then that's the right size for there. And then that stamp was from this stamp set here, All Things Fabulous, Nobody Gets Me Like You Do. Um, and actually this is gonna be my featured stamp set next week. I think it's got really pretty layering. You layer three stamps on top of each other to get these flowers. So that's gonna be my next week's. So that's how I did the back. And then I'll, I was gonna stamp a kitty on here and a little mouse. There's a little, um, there's a little mouse in here um, that I was gonna stamp on. So those are my cards. I hope you like them. Let me bring in some of my other ones that I made. Um, let's see, where did I, there's my boxes. My treats and my other cards are just in case you missed these at the beginning. These were some of the other cards that I made, the two out of the catalog. And my um, pet sympathy cards is the dog one and the cat one. And then where's my little guy in his cone of shame? And then this little guy was my other one. So I've had lots of fun making cards with this set. And of course, this um, bundle, you can earn free. Do you remember me telling you last week about um, these stamping up um, the demonstrator deal at the moment that you can pick any bundle in the catalog um, to get free um, with your $99 um, kit? So this would be one that you could get also. And I think if you're a cat or a dog lover like me, this would be a really fun one to have. Um, so anyway, I hope you um, hope you enjoyed that. Um, I've buried my stamping, my website and my host code. This is a new host code. So um, I closed out my last one. So um, this is the new one to use if you go online and order anything. And don't forget to share this with your friends. And... I think that's about it. I Oh, and an, another exciting thing is happening today. The new holiday catalogue is going to be online for demonstrators to see right um, after this. So I'm off to do that. So I'm off to look at that. So anyway, have a great day, everybody. And thanks for joining me. And please come back next week. I'll see you then. Bye bye.